Okay, everyone, I just wanted to go ahead and get started. Um, welcome again. My name is Wade Carlson. I'm with RuneCast Analyzer, or Analyzer, RuneCast Solutions, and I'm a technical um, engineer here at RuneCast, where um, basically I am a pre-sales engineer that um, works with uh, potential clients and ultimately um, illustrates how RuneCast product works, how it gets applied to the environment, um, I also partner with potential clients and prospects and ultimately um, work with them to identify the proof of value of RuneCast and a solution and how it can have um, an impact on the specific businesses. So that's my role. Um, been with the company here for a few months. Um, my historical um, path had been with uh, large Fortune 500 companies where I played many different roles from VMware sysadmin to Windows Server sysadmin to uh, customer service management, ultimately leading um, teams in those functional areas um, and, and managing a team across the globe. Um, so ultimately, you know, I, I've worn different hats and I like to present material and the benefits of RuneCast from not only a system administration perspective and VMware, but also from a management perspective and what that means to business um, and how RuneCast can ultimately save, um, save resources, time, downtime, analysis, um, resolutions, proactive analysis of environments and those types of things. So um, that's a quick intro on myself. Um, let's go ahead and dive in. What I want to talk to you today about is how RoomCast can um, help you in your environment with in relation to the security and the, the never ending and constant security battles that um, I, us IT professionals face. Um, so I just want to go through a quick agenda. Um, and during this call, we'll have a survey towards the end of the call as well. Um, but ultimately, at high level, this is the agenda that I'll be covering. Um, I will set aside about 10 minutes at the end of the call for any questions that anybody has. Um, be happy, happy to answer any of those. Um, but ultimately, the, the, the focus tonight is on how RuneCast can help our IT businesses in direct relation to security, um, security compliance, um, security uh, vulnerabilities, um, threat detection, and all those types of things. I also want to talk a little bit about the supported compliancy standards that RuneCast has built in, um, some overlap among those standards that we have. Um, you know, ultimately, you know, there are many different frameworks and guidelines today. Some of them overlap. I want to talk about that a little bit. Um, and then, you know, kind of dig down into RuneCast itself and how you can enable the different guidelines and policies within the product, um, either enable or disable them. If you don't want to see all of them, hone in specifically on what you would like to, to see and um, show the compliance in your environment against, et cetera. Um, the filter function that we have built in as well, um, based on the security guidelines and standards, there may be there's usually things with from a security perspective that uh, that needs to be ignored for various reasons. We have the capability of filtering those out, so you don't have to uh, <clears throat> keep seeing the same issue creep up over and over. Um, and also, I'm going to talk a little bit about the updates. Um, basically, our product roadmap. Um, lately, we've been adding oh a new security standard um, about every month, every other month based on customer needs and wishes. Um, <clears throat> if we get feedback from <clears throat> a potential prospect that needs a different security standard, or we identify a vertical, an industry vertical that needs to be addressed with our product, then we have been implementing and adding those things, um, of which CIS is the, is the latest standard that we've added um, within the last couple of weeks. So I wanna talk about those a little bit as well. Um, so to kick it off, really, uh, RuneCast Analyzer, and ultimately a lot of people will ask, well, how can this really help me, specifically from a security perspective? Um, what RuneCast does is it basically automates your security, um, the compliance and identification of your security configurations in your environment. So um, ultimately, <clears throat> RuneCast is analyzing your configuration, it's measuring those configurations against six of the primary 
um, security, industry security guidelines and standards we have in um, the security IT threat world, if you will. Um, I, I, I'd like to refrain from using framework as a descriptor because the framework is uh, kind of a loose fit that can fit many different things within it. But um, for you know, common, common discussion, framework guidelines, security controls are, are and can be interrelated or interchanged as far as descriptors. So um, if, you, if you hear me referring to a guideline, a standard or a framework, then I'm specific to RuneCast and what I'm discussing in this in this webinar is they're all interchangeable. <clears throat> um, today, the security <clears throat> standards that RuneCast supports are um, by default out of the box VMware hardening guidelines, um, the PCI DSS payment card industry, um, the DSA STIGs standards, uh, that's De Department of Defense, um, HIPAA. Healthcare industry, it was related to HIPAA. Uh, BSI Grundschutz is a German government um, control or standard um, that can be cross, I guess, cross reference to some of the, like the US basic, you know, government security standards and other, other geographies as well. It's not necessarily specific to Germany. It just happens to be a, a standard that was developed and defined in Germany. And last but not least, CIS. Um, again, we had a lot of uh, <clears throat> potential customers and customers request CIS be brought in. Uh, more and more people are are finding and needing to comply against CIS. So we've added it. Um, we have others that are on the roadmap. And the NIST standards is one we're looking at to implement in the near future um, and so on and so forth. So the point being, um, with these various standards uh, from a VMware infrastructure perspective, there certainly can be and will be some overlap with what's being identified, the vulnerabilities that are related, the configuration settings and different things, and ultimately the fixes. Um, there isn't a, I wouldn't say there's a ton of overlap, but there, there are certainly some overlap. Uh, DESA STIG um, comes to mind as an example as compared to CIS. Um, you know, DS is more Department of Defense focused. CIS is is generally more government focused. Um, they can certainly play together, but they can also certainly be exchanged uh, one for the other, so to speak. But I'll go into more detail on that here in a few minutes. <clears throat> and you know, once you have RuneCast installed, ultimately conf the configuration with it within RuneCast is quite simple. Um, with those standards that I just showed that come out of the box with RuneCast, you can go into your settings <clears throat> in your web client and basically toggle on or off any of these um, control standards. So um, I, I, I try to tell people that I that I meet with um, from from a basic VMware infrastructure perspective, you know, in my mind, it's obvious that the VMware hardening guidelines is probably a a standard of interest to subscribe to, or at least try to comply against. Um, but some of the other ones as well. But that's ultimately depends on the business you're within, obviously, and and certain things that are important to you as a as a business in the field. But what I wanted to do um, and, and discuss as well is not only can there be some overlap, but um, I think it's important to understand and not silo um, yourself within the business or a vertical. As, as an example, if you're in healthcare, you're, you know, you're definitely going to probably entertain the idea or need to comply against the HIPAA guidelines. Um, but say if you're in medical insurance where HIPAA is important, you may also want to enable the PCI because if you're selling something, then the, the credit card um, position comes into play. And most people these days obviously you know, uh, perform transactions via the payment card industry. And then again, you know, we go back into the settings, security appliance, 
edit and you update within there and you'll get a, a, a screenshot of what the controls are and how you can, it, it's real simple, check, check or uncheck a box to enable or disable them. Um, if they're checked, they'll show up within the GUI. If they're unchecked, they will not. Um, but uh, w with that, you know, obviously you go in and um, select <clears throat> which ones you want to comply against. And really that's the whole intent is of this webinar is really to get people thinking about um, which guidelines that they feel are important to their business and what they sh should be implementing and complying against. Um, that That's not always the easiest thing to determine, especially when the majority of our customers and prospects are VMware system administrators. Um, very few VM admins that I know of are security experts. Um, so, you know, uh, the intent of, of the direction that Roomcast takes is to help take that burden off of VMware sysadmins' shoulders um, and ultimately provide a mechanism in which we can illustrate uh, the gaps in the environment and, you know, comply from a security perspective. So, you know, what's what's nice about the product is not only do you get the vulnerabilities that are being reported, you can kick out an actual report, hand it to security officer, security person within your organization that works this and is responsible ultimately for the IT security and show them where the issues are in the environment. And then ultimately, proactively go out, and remediate those issues and fix them. <clears throat> Within a Runecast, <clears throat> you will receive and um, store, Runecast stores the last like 365 days worth of data. So you can, you can go in via the reporting and other mechanisms, view how you've done historically over time. Um, that helps in the fact that if you're out there doing a remediation effort, making changes to the environment, you can see how that impacts your, your posture, your security posture over time, and how you're improving in that respect, or not improving, on the other hand, if you're not proactively going out and making those checks. Um, so that's a, that's a very nice function. And again, it goes back to the ability to communicate, effectively communicate back to your security organization or individuals, um, auditors or whoever has interest in your in your security um, health, what your environment looks like, and illustrate and explain um, to finite detail what each of those um, risk factors are and what they mean, and then ultimately get to a point where they can do a a business impact analysis of what has been identified. Um, so I, I, I touched briefly on talking about the guidelines and their overlaps, which there are, and I won't be able to go into all of them um, in this call, but the main purpose of this is just to illustrate that there are some. Um, I, I went through and provided a list of different industry standards that are out there. Some of these are, are quote unquote frameworks, some are simple standards or guidelines. Um, some are both, um, but I just wanted to talk to some of them about some of them for a minute. Um, as an example, the uh, GDPR, you know, we get we get people asking for that sometimes. ISO, some of these are older standards that continually are updated. So uh, periodically you'll have an incremented ISO number that's more relevant to the, this day and age and so forth. Um, you know, there's FedRAMP out there um, in the environment. Um, NERC, NIST, already touched on, we're looking at NIST in our in our roadmap. Um, the ANSI, ISA standards, and the CIS. So with these, as you can see and can summarize, summarize is that there is going to be some overlap. So the government entities and security guidelines will have a lot of the similar functions and features and configuration standards that are called out. Um, FedRAMP is an example. I talked about the DESA stigs already, CIS, um, those types of things. Um, so, you know, ultimately it comes down to making a decision 
that's most applicable to your environment and which guideline you want to um, comply against. And really, that's that's what it really mostly boils down to. Um, let me scroll down. <clears throat> So that, that at a high level is what I want to talk about in the slides. What I want to do now is also go through and share and go into our uh, uh, the product itself and show you some of these features and functions that I've illustrated in here. Um, I'd like to also talk about some of the um, the guidelines that Rincast supports. There's some um, separate functionality of some of those, like CIS is an example and PCI, DSS, um, and then I'll go in to show this here real quick. So let me go into our web client. And let me pull this out here. So those of you familiar with Rencast will see this familiar screen. What I wanted to do is go into the security hardening section um, and just cover this. So again, you know, the default standards that come with RuneCast are the VMware security hardening guidelines, the DSA stick PCI, HIPAA, BSI IT, and CIS. Um, what I wanted to show as well is the ease in which you can toggle these on and off, okay? So if you go into settings, security compliance, again, go in here and edit, and like I mentioned before, it's as simple as and as easy as toggling these on and off, okay? So within a VMware environment, I already touched on it, VMware security hardening guidelines. That is probably key for anybody with the intent and interest in Runecast. Um, but, you know, what other guidelines should somebody implement? Well, again, it depends on what business you're in and what's most important to you. Um, you know, VMware guidelines, I, I I highly recommend everybody just simply leave that on. Um, if I'm part of, you know, in a government contract or D Department of Defense working with some of those, obviously I'm going to enable the DISA and the, and the CIS, perhaps enable both of those. Um, example I gave before, if I'm in the healthcare industry and I actually perform transactions via, via credit card or payment card, um, I'll have probably HIPAA and PCI enabled. Um, and that's really, you know, as simple as that as far as configuring um, our solution for the analysis. So what I wanted to do now is dig into some of these. If you've seen the RuneCast demo, you've probably seen us go through some of these items already. But as I illustrated earlier, you know, the, the information that's provided in each of these findings, um, you can simply expand this section and look into the detail. Um, what we're always gonna have is an, is an overall detail. We're gonna have a link to, directly to the website um, related to the security standard. This one is VMware, so it'll go to the VMware security hardening guidelines. Um, in the findings, it'll show you which objects it's been identified in the environment. Um, you'll have a pass-fail rating, right? Security is either, either it's configured to the, to the standard or it's not, um, and so on and so forth. Um, but what I'd like to do is show you the differences between like a VMware hardening guideline. Um, there isn't really any custom features or other special features with the VMware guidelines. It's really cut and dry. Um, either, either is or is not. Um, but if you take PCI as an example, um, PCI has a lot of different features and you'll see how it looks different than the VMware guidelines, okay? In PCI, you have milestones, um, which are different security groupings, if you will, within the PCI standard. Um, and I'm showing you here where you can sort on which milestone that you have particular interest in. Um, and all another feature that's nice is that you have a customizable um, filter options. So you can select your customizable standards and features and checks, if you will, and you can go in and modify um, the values that those standards are held against. 
Um, the example I like to use, generally use is if PCI is has a standard set on password length, as an example, and say their standard is um, 12 characters, and you want to set a 10 character value in your environment, this is where you can go in here, um, filter on the customizable fields, um, ultimately go to that control and customize the value and update it. Okay, so that's what I really like about PCI is you have some some custom features with it that you can set that are particular to your environment. Um, and then within CIS, most of these other ones are very, very straightforward, like VMware hardening guidelines. Uh, with, within CIS, um, it has, that's a little bit different than the others, a recommendation section. And what I wanna illustrate here is not only is CIS looking at your VMware infrastructure perspective, but it shows you these areas in which that control is relative to. So is it relative to access? Is it relative to storage, console, logging, install? Um, but what is nice is about, it has a several listings for um, the virtual machines themselves. And the other guidelines will illustrate and check against virtual machines but there isn't a, a, a separate filter function like this. So if you're just interested in the VMware uh, or the virtual machine, um, from a virtual machine guest perspective, um, you, you can filter and sort in here. So you can look at the virtual machine tools. Um, you can look at the virtual machine storage and those types of things, everything that's listed here and sort and filter on those if you have particular interest. Um, say, say VMware, um, at a certain time has a vulnerability that's exposed in, in a virtual machine or VM tools, specific version, if you will. I mean, you can come in here and sort this out, kick out a report and go out there and update the tools that are, that are suspect in your environment related to that issue that's been identified at risk. Um, I really like that perspective of CIS. Um, also, within CIS, you have the level one and level two. Um, configuration standards or security standards. Um, the level one is um, more of a baseline, I guess is the best way I like to explain it. Um, level two is, you know, level one is is suspected that those configurations and recommendations uh, once implemented will not impact your environment or will highly, you know, the, chan the possibility of it having an impact in your environment is low. Um, level two, um, has the designation that these checks and configuration changes related to security could potentially um, have impact in your environment. Um, those are those are those are items and configuration changes that you want to vet um, thoroughly, probably in a lab environment, um, before they're implemented into a production environment because uh, it might impact an application, it might impact uh, network latency or network um, throughput anything along those lines. So that's something that uh, um, ultimately you'd want to test and vet before you pushed out. Um, also within the CIS, you have a scored section um, and filter capability. And scored is really relative to the way that the, the, the standard is, um, the standards and the checks are received or the way in which they, the data can be extrapolated. So it scored is yes, no. Um, either these results can be received within an automated method or fashion or not. Um, that's ultimately really what those two boil down to. So you can um, select and filter on each one. Um, the non-automated function and methods will illustrate to you in Runecast and then it'd probably ultimately be a, a manual, more of a manual type of effort on going out and remediating um, and proactively remediating those risks and issues. Um, so that's really kind of what I wanted to, wanted to show. Um, within the CIS, there are different standards um, for the various ESXi versions. Okay, so you can see in here, if I do a drop down, I have in my lab environment, I have a 6.5 um, host servers running and I have 6.7. So I have both versions running in the environment. Um, and ultimately, um, 
via the standard we want to focus on. There are different standards for each version, so you want to select um, which one you want to key in on in this um, within the client itself. Um, as always, Runecast has an export function. So um, after the analysis is performed and ran, you can uh, export a report um, and you can either co copy it to your clipboard, you can export it in a CSV file format or um, kick out a PDF report from it. Um, that in the, we do that for each section of Runecast and the functionality within Runecast, um, the, the, the full uh, reporting functionality. But I find this most useful in a way that I can, I can run this in my environment, I can kick out the report and I can hand that to a security officer that's on staff in my environment. If it's not me, if I'm not the one that ultimately has responsibility for the IT security, I can hand this report quickly and easily to the person that is responsible for it, if it isn't me. Um, so, you know, again, back to the reporting functionality, uh, you can sort and filter. Um, I showed that in many different ways. Um, another thing I'd like to cover is, you know, I, I talked about the filter option or the ignore, right? Um, two different ways that you can perform those actions. Uh, if I'm drilling down looking through this security uh, check, if you will, and I failed it, um, but I want to look at uh, VMware Update Manager as a tool, used to automate patch management. Uh, so ultimately, it related to Update Manager. I'm failing this audit. Um, I can go out and I can simply ignore this if I don't want to see it anymore. I've already vetted that this is not a problem in my environment and it doesn't pose any security risks. I can simply um, turn this off and filter it out. I don't have to see it again. Um, and that's available in every section also of Runecast um, if you're talking KBs or best practices or the security hardening specifically. Um, another way to get to your filter options is back into um, the settings button, filter, okay? Um, and, and you can filter specifically on the security guidelines. You can toggle them on or off. You can delete them if you simply know you will never want to see them again. Um, but, you know, my recommendation is always just simply turn them off. That way, if you ever change your mind and want to re-enable those, you can simply come in here and click a button and it's re-enabled. Um, so that... Basically getting to a point where we're wrapping up a little bit. Um, I do have a some time slated for the top of the hour or, or 10 minutes prior to the top of the hour for any questions. And I will address any questions that anybody has at that time. Um, there are a couple other things that I wanted to talk about regarding the security hardening. Um, Runecast Analyzer comes with a VRO plugin. Uh, VRO Realize Orchestrator. Um, not everybody runs VRO, but those that do um, can utilize the VRO plugin, and that enables you to automatically remediate the security checks in your environment. So you can either utilize one of the default workflows that we provide, or create your own workflow, and you know go and auto remediate these failures that you're seeing in your environment to where you don't have to go and touch um, each of these configurations and servers and um, different areas manually. So that is also available um, and highly effective. I mean, just basically create your workflow, target your objects that you want updated, um, define what you want updated and push it out via an automated method. So with that being said, you know, again, this this entire webinar is security focused. Um, you know, many other features of Runecast. I won't go into them here, um, but a lot of this is similar functionality. So like I showed before, we have the reporting functionality, the proactive nature of Runecast, and really that's what we're about. We're trying to save people time. We're trying to illustrate and show results in your environment of configuration gaps that you have related to security, related to other items, but you know, um, 
and drill down and give you the exact nature of that control. So we don't have to, as VMware sysadmins, be security experts. And that's really the key I want to get across because I have historically been a VMware sysadmin. I would never want to, or not that I'm I'm painting a negative here, but I would never want to classify myself when I was occupying that role as a security person or expert, because that's a whole different area. There are many of these different standards out there. Um, and again, I, I touched on earlier, there's overlaps between the two. And really, you know, it boils down to um, as far as your configuration and what you want to apply and get compliant against is the most relevant to your business. So that is something that takes some investigation. Um, but ultimately, you know, our position is to try to provide some of the industry standards that are most relevant um, across industries. And I think, you know, you know, not, 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 not sounding too much of a room cast salesperson, but I think we've done a pretty good job. And like I say, we're continuing to, on a monthly basis, evaluate, analyze, and implement other security standards as well. So if you're not seeing anything that, that fits directly to your line of business per se, or your security audit requirements, then we will be implementing them in the near future, most likely. But also remember that many of these have some the overlapping reach of those. Um, I had somebody recently talk to me about a security standard that they're held against, um, and it really had to do. It was it was it was kind of a cross reference between. Um, it, you know, I used it as an example in here, um, the healthcare industry and the payment card industry. Okay. Um, it happened to be, you'd never think it, it happened to be a cruise line ship. Okay. These guys operated a cruise line and you immediately think PCI for ticket sales and, you know, concierge and all that type of stuff, um, services that they provide on cruise ships. But I it never dawned on me. Um, in a million years that they would have a requirement for HIPAA. And I was like, why do they have a requirement for HIPAA? Well, they have to have medical staff on board on these ships, um, at least a registered nurse. Sometimes they have doctors. Um, so there's obviously the HIPAA um, personal privacy piece of HIPAA that w was of interest to them. Um, in fact, they were, they were, they were keen in and honing in on HIPAA overall, but that's when I, I spun them around to thinking about PCI as well, because all the payment card transactions that they perform in their ticket sales. So that's just, a, that's an example of um, a business and, and a vertical line of business that could utilize and benefit from analyzing their environments and validating their configuration against multiple security guidelines. Um, so with that being said, that is the majority of my presentation. Um, again, I did have the illustration of the different guidelines, what's included in RuneCast, how you configure RuneCast itself to enable or disable these standards, um, the filtering options if you don't want to see a a check um, or a failure in your environment, and ultimately your reporting functionalities. So with that being said, that is concluding this portion of the webinar. And what I'd like to do now is open it up to any sort of questions that anybody might have that I can help answer. Okay, I'm just looking through. Some of you have, have already added some questions. Uh, let's see, one was, yeah, Jonathan, my, my apologies again for the screen sharing. It totally user error on my part. Um, okay, the, the next one is about NSXT and is, is it on the roadmap and when? Yes. I, I answered some of the questions. Oh. Oh, okay. Great. Oh. 
Excellent. Okay, it looks like uh, my colleague Stan, um, the leader of our, our company has already jumped in and answered some of these questions. So let me just open it up and see if anybody has anything else that hasn't been pasted in here. Um, any other questions that are outstanding that people have? Be happy to answer them. Let's see, I see one in here. Let me look at here. You perform offline updates on all those? Yeah, so the question is, can you perform offline updates on all those guidelines? Um, and the answer to that question is yes. You can perform offline updates to not only the version of Runecast that you're running, but also the, <clears throat> the definition database. Um, so, you know, you don't even need to have an internet connection to your Runecast analyzer um, as a web client or product to update it or the definitions. So to answer that, yes, you can certainly do that. And the knowledge definitions not only cover the, the security guidelines and updates to those guidelines, but also our, uh, our knowledge base articles, best practices, the HCL, and et cetera. Let me, let me search for other questions that we have. I have a question. Is it possible to define security guidelines yourself? Um, I have to think that through for a second because generically out of the box, you you cannot configure Runecast to analyze your environment based on customized or self-defined security guidelines. Um, so out of the box, no, but uh, with that being said, with as an example, the VRO plugin um, and your workflows, I think you could probably get creative in what um, not only Runecast is identifying the environment, but also some specific checks that you might want to perform in your environment, obviously. Um, if you have VRO and ever ran that, you can customize the workflows and apply those um, however you see fit. So to answer the question, not natively out of the box, but there could be creative ways that you could come up with. I'd be happy to discuss those with anybody as well. Let's see if I see anything else in here. Let's see, somebody was asking, we plan to support vRealize Suite, VMware vRealize Suite. Yeah, I, yeah, I think, um, just wondering which product specifically you might have in mind within the suite. See if we can. Okay, I see another question. Can you re create a report and extract it? 
Uh, yeah, I think I illustrated that that question, Dennis. It looks like it came from might have <clears throat> might have come in prior to me discussing that in the in the, uh, the in the web client itself. But what I can do real quick is just illustrate again um, in here. You can see my screen. I have the VMware guidelines highlighted, and you know, again, you can. <clears throat> export a report, you can check to include affected objects, um, export that either to your clipboard, CSV file or PDF file, uh, whichever format you'd prefer. So you have another question. Is it possible to apply specific security guidelines at a cluster level? Um, so when you configure Roomcast to point to your vCenter server, you're able to <clears throat> exclude certain objects that you don't want to have analyzed. So I guess from that perspective, you could include or exclude an entire cluster. So that would be probably the, the workaround. I, you won't have the cluster illustrated per se as a as a check and uncheck as an option, but you can include and exclude host servers that were are within that cluster and therefore exclude the cluster entirely if you don't want it analyzed. So I hope that answered that question. But remember, in doing so, you lose uh, the best practices, the KBs, and other things. So it's a uh, more of an all or nothing. Um, you could you could also use some of the filter sections and options too if there are cluster, cluster related <clears throat> alerts that are being identified in the environment. That might be another way that you can exercise the options to do that. Okay. Uh, that's the end of the questions I see. Um, if anybody else has any other questions, I'd be happy to answer. I'm going to go ahead and leave the line open for some time. Um, it's like I, I, uh, I wrap this up a little sooner than I expected. Okay. Oh, here's one I hadn't seen. What are the limitations of the demo version? So the demo version is gonna show you a certain percentage of your environment um, as far as actionable items. So it's about 30% of issues will be identified within the, uh, the trial version or the demo. I see Selene followed up. So the V realize suite, and you're thinking in relation to VRA, VRO. Okay. Yeah, thank you for that question. We we do have on the roadmap to support VRA, and currently we do support VRO via our plugin. Um, today, the VRO and the, and the default workflows that are provided are more focused security function and remediation, but we're looking to expand the capabilities of that as far as some of the other items as well. And we go back and forth with that because a lot of our clients indicate that we, they don't want us to automatically change configurations in their environment. Um, so we've focused mainly in the security area because security 
normally just boils down to a a simple configuration. You know, I like to use SSH enabled, but you know, as an example, it's either on or off, right? And generally, turning it off doesn't affect much. Um, could potentially, but most cases, it doesn't affect much if you turn it off. Um, so, you know, the thought is we're reluctant to to do a lot with the uh, auto remediation effort um, and focus more on the uh, the proactive and reporting nature for the product. But with that being, with that also being said, <clears throat> you know, utilizing VRO, like I mentioned, we do provide default workflows related to security specifically, but um, the plugin is available. So, you know, um, you can get creative with, you know, customizable workflows and what Runecast is providing and identifying in your environment and how you would want to remediate some of those actions if it's related to a KB article or a best practice etc. So that's certainly possible. Okay, I think we've, uh, I, I'm not seeing any more new questions. I think uh, we've come to the end of the webinar and I want to go ahead and wrap it up. So I appreciate everybody's attendance. Thank you for your time. Um, my email address is not listed here, but it is wade.carlson at runecast.com. If you have any questions and would like further follow up with regards to the product or functionality, um, the security standards guidelines specifically, please send me an email. I'd be happy to answer any of your questions that you might have. Um, and we will wrap it up. Thank you for everybody joining and take care. Have a good evening.